How y'all doing? Hope y'all ready for another Tucson because, uh, well, that's the name of the video and that's what I'm going to end up talking about here. This is a kind of an interesting one. Um, and I really like this thing. This is a TS-286. No, uh, no relation to the, uh, the particular, uh, Intel processor. I never had one. I went from an 8088 to a 386 SX. And then a 486DX2, and then a AMD K5. Whatever, that's uh, not knife stuff. I should uh, just go ahead and shut up on that. <laughs> but uh, yes, yeah, so you can see this is a very strange, angular, spearish kind of uh, point knife here. And it's got some interesting curves and things going on. You can grab it uh, a little bit more relaxed, and you have a, a nice groove for your thumb to get in there. But you can also uh, choke up just a little bit, and you got some nice jumping up there for doing a lot of nice powerful cuts there. And you also have a nice large finger choil. And maybe I could do with it being just a touch larger, but as it is, I feel okay uh, trying to uh, end up using that. Besides, if I did really want to uh, just use the tip on this, the, uh, the blade on this is nice and broad, so I can do my nice pinch grip that I uh, appreciate doing on a lot of knives. So, yes, titanium, uh, I got subframe lock, there you go. We got, um, eh, it is technically their meh carta. Uh, they always seem to um, say that it's linen, and uh, I look at it more and more and think every time that uh, I think it's more or less burlap, which, uh, hey, some people like, you know. Um, Boker charges an arm and a leg to uh, end up having a knife with uh, some of that on there. So, it's all right. But this is uh, fairly decently um, done as far as uh, the contouring on it goes and uh, the finish on it. It's a little bit nicer than uh, some of their other uh, more ragged stuff that we've uh, seen. So, yeah, we got a nice uh, flipper tab here that goes down into that hole there. The ergos on this thing, actually, even though it looks really weird, they work out really, really well. I mean, I, well, Wong generally does really know what he's doing as far as um, designing a lot of knives, and especially a lot of knives that um, uh, do well for uh, those of us with larger hands down to normal-sized hands. So that's something I definitely appreciate here. Uh, this is in 14C28N, and we have a factory stone wash on this, because this was after them kind of um, knee-jerk reacting and uh, putting out a lot of uh, newer knives in D2. Even though this is in the uh, 200 series, it did come out uh, quite a bit later, but uh, that mostly has to do with um, Tucson trying to uh, backfill uh, holes in their... Um, in their uh, model numbers, probably because they were originally assigned to someone else and uh, those uh, particular designs ended up falling through or something along those lines. Not quite sure, but yes, uh, this thing has really, really nice action on it. Feels super, super nice. Let's see. So let's go ahead and uh, go through some statistics on here. We got 3.7 millimeters for the blade stock thickness. That's about average for um, Tucson. Uh, maybe just a little bit on the uh, the thinner side than uh, some of the crazy four millimeter ones, but uh, still works out all right. Um, not the most lightweight knife. We got uh, 4.72 ounces or 113.5 grams. And uh, as you can see, it's a little bit handle heavy. Basically, that balance point is uh, almost right there at that uh, connection between the uh, the micarta and the uh, titanium bolster there. That does make the uh, the blade feel a little bit more nimble, kind of like having a uh, weighted pommel on a sword. So that helps out a little bit. And uh, I do appreciate that a little bit. Even though some people probably think that uh, feels quite a bit different than uh, some other knives here. We got 3.7 inches from here. To the back here however as you can see we have a uh, very very large finger choil so that sharpened blade length area is going to be much lower uh, now to see if I'm uh, actually accurate on that because I haven't uh, fully done the, uh, the measurements for uh, this thing 
in uh, metric. Yeah, 3.7 inches. So for metric, we got 94 millimeters right there. But as I said, yes, much uh, much shorter as far as the, uh, the actual cutting uh, edge of the blade there. Okay, let's see. And one more measurement. Uh, we got 0 0.59, I believe, for the uh, the inches there. Yeah, 0 0.59. Well, pretty close to 0 0.6. Yeah, well, whatever. It's right around there. Uh, so, yeah, just under 15.2 millimeters. So not incredibly thick, but, um, you know, it's going to be a little bit thicker due to it being a uh, contoured rather than it being a flat slab sort of thing. Uh, we do have their, uh, their tumbled titanium, which does, uh, resist some snail trails a little bit more than just a standard bead blast. And, uh, yeah, we do have micro milling there. If you can actually see that. Yeah. So the, um, the elephant in the room that I did want to address with this thing. Um, this, as you can see, it's a pocket clip. It has one single screw going into my carta. And, um, you know, I haven't really been happy about that in the past. However, Wong here has um, kind of done things a little bit differently. This screw is uh, a little bit more difficult to uh, actually get out than some of the others. That's okay. Yes, you can see here we have an extra hole. That's because we have a stud behind there. Uh, so that has two points of contact in there. And we do have high angled walls going on there. So this one is not going to have those same kind of problems that... Uh, some other designers have uh, done with their uh, pocket clips mounted into micarta. This one, generally, unless you've done some really, really ugly stuff to it, is not going to uh, end up with uh, a whole bunch of um, uh, pocket clip rock after it uh, kind of wears out a little bit. Uh, he has recently, if I can find it here, um, kind of done a modification on that or an improvement on a uh, more recent one. Uh -huh, here we are. That being uh, this guy here, the uh, 336, which I think I've already reviewed. Maybe not, but it, I have definitely had it on the channel to uh, kind of use that. Uh, so this one, you have one screw as well here, and you can see it's still longer on this side. Uh, however, I'm not going to fully disassemble this, but uh, screw it. I'll use an O-light. You can see down in there that, uh, yeah, this one is screwed from the inside and the outside there. So basically the same kind of thing as that, um, as that stud uh, that we have on here, just kind of an evolution of it that makes it uh, just even a little bit more strong. So, yes, there is definitely a way around it. Wong has found it, and I hope that, um, you know, anybody else who was having troubles with uh, those kind of things in the past, uh, there's been a Tepe design or two, and uh, definitely some from uh, Night Morning that have had that trouble, uh, will end up using some of those... Uh, design cues to uh, protect that so yeah definitely wanted to um, go ahead and address that so yes as you can see it's weird it's real weird but it works it's really really comfortable in a lot of different grips um, this little uh, curve here for your thumb I also find really comfortable if I do want to uh, end up grabbing it in a reverse if I'm you know looping around some uh, rope or twine or something like that makes that really really comfortable to deal with yeah it just um it's very unconventional but it really 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 works 
But uh, okay, how about if I uh, go ahead and do a couple of uh, blade size comparisons. There's the uh, Spartaco PM2. There's the, uh, the Benchman 940, which, uh, yeah, decently similar as far as the, uh, the handle length is and stuff like that, but uh, a little bit shorter in the blade. This one I should probably retrieve my uh, Endura from because it is kind of a uh, larger knife. So there's that. Sure, why not? Bug out because I have it. And, yeah. We'll go with the rat number one. So, yeah. That's good right there. Sing full flat grind. This thing really comes down to a really, really, really nice edge. You know, this is uh, definitely more of a slicey rather than uh, one of those acute hard use kind of knives. And uh, it definitely shows. Let's see. And I can, I suppose, do a little bit of a uh, cardboard cutting with it. Yeah, effortless. And do some nice curves that doesn't really stop you or anything like that. And yeah, that tip is uh, super, super nice and slicey and thin and pokey. Not the most reinforced, so I wouldn't really use this for something like opening paint cans or something like that. However, another Wong design that I would say you should probably go ahead and do that with is this guy here. It's another Wong design. This is a TS-59, but um, yeah, this thing is so thick on this uh, Tonto edge here that, uh, yeah, I would feel fairly confident using it for uh, some prying tasks. Well, now that I've done that, I'll go ahead and cut those off. But, all right, yes, that seems to be basically everything I wanted to cover here with the TS-286. It's a uh, really, really good design, but very unorthodox from Wong. He's done a, a couple of uh, kind of stranger ones, but this one seems to be um, pretty strange looking as far as some of them go. Oh, since I didn't mention it earlier, the pocket clip works out pretty good. We've got a nice long uh, throw and uh, an area here to uh, actually catch on your... Um, your pocket material we got a decent amount of flex there uh so yeah works really good and it's fairly tall for uh holding on to um quite a bit uh thicker material um things not necessarily important in the summertime for most folks but um hey in the winter definitely helps so with all that being said that's uh the basics that i wanted to cover here on the ts-286 so if that's all you were here for, was just kind of the uh, the review opinions and cutting and all that sort of stuff, then uh, I appreciate y'all for stopping by. The rest of us are going to take a look, a little bit closer look on the inside here. And this one, the pocket clip, does not go into the uh, Chicago screw, so I can leave that alone for the disassembly, at least I believe so. And pull the, uh, the pivot out. Yeah. Super nice to get inside there. Super easy. We got the uh, uh, steel insert there. We got the, uh, the steel uh, bearing races in there. We got a fairly thick uh, blade stop pin going on in there. And a uh, decently long... Uh, backspacer there, which, uh, hey, I always appreciate backspacers. This guy does have a, a, a D-shaped pivot to its uh, construction there. And uh, pretty much with all other uh, two suns, that D-shape should face basically back towards the, uh, the pocket clip when you're uh, putting them back together. And yeah, we do have a little bit of a, a detent ramp going on on this one here. And not a uh, not much in the way of um, weight relieving going on on the front here, but that definitely makes sense because uh, all of that weight relieving is um, done on this side. Sure, why not? We can uh, go ahead and uh, 
pull that out. I do believe this is a T6. Yeah, they, they do end up doing that for uh, a lot of their scale attachments from time to time. But yes, you can see that we definitely have quite a bit of rate, weight relieving because we have the, uh, the titanium bolster and then uh, the rest of that there. So, yes. So, when I did order this thing, um, you know, my first thought was not, wow, this is going to be the most, um, uh, comfortable and uh, most sensible knife ever. Uh, I, I genuinely thought, that thing looks really weird, but, man, it really ended up working quite, quite well. It's... Not my absolute favorite Wong design, but it's definitely up there. It's uh, it's quite a good piece. And if you are kind of on the look for a little bit more unconventional uh, blade shapes that uh, still work quite well, this one definitely stacks up in that favor. A bit... Uh, a bit leaf shape, uh, not quite like the uh, the Spyderco uh, leaf shape blades, but um, still functionally very similar to it. I don't think I quite got that uh, pivot directly where I wanted it. That feels like I got it. <laughs> yep. I have, of course, over tightened the pivot. I generally do that until I uh, get everything tightened down. Just because it's easier than uh, focusing on that in the moment. Screws are going to fight me, but that's okay. I'll just uh, do it a little bit more sensibly. Now, these can turn a little bit on you, unfortunately, because the, uh, the Chicago screws that they uh, end up using are not D-shaped. That's perfectly fine. You can basically use a, uh, another bit to uh, basically just hold it in place. Uh, on the other side there, you know, whether it just be another bit or... Or you can use something like one of these little Gorilla Grip guys to uh, fold it over and uh, hold it on the other side there real quick. It doesn't take much extra force. It just requires something to uh, not spin on the other side to uh, fully tighten it up. That doesn't necessarily affect a whole lot of them, but it does affect this one. So, hey, yeah. there is definitely that to be considered, I suppose. But, uh, yeah, like I said... Pivot's a little bit uh, tighter than it probably needs to be. Get out of here, T6. I don't need you. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, action just ends up working out super great on this guy. Anyway, I will shut up now because uh, this one's probably gone on a bit. Uh, Longer than I probably needed to, but that's okay. This is a TS-286 from Wong. Uh, kind of a newer design. It's, uh, at least if I remember right, this uh, came out either at the end of 2021 or sometime during 2022 here. But uh, really useful, despite how strange it might look to some people. Alrighty, as always, I appreciate y'all for watching, and have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, yo. Know?